Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today is a very fun day. It's one of my favorite videos to film. We, I mean, I know some of this stuff probably gets repetitive, but I'm going to put a little spin on this that you guys have been asking for. That's what this is for. And you're probably thinking, we didn't ask for a tub. And I'm going to say, yeah, you did. You just didn't know it. So today's a moving day. No, no, we didn't get a new facility. Still in the reptile house. This place is working great, although uh, I will talk one of these days about planning a place because we... We, we bumped ahead on a few things. It took us a while to figure out that we once we got figured out has made this season go way smoother and better than last season. So we can kind of help you with that too. But it's moving day as I have animals getting from small tubs to bigger tubs, right? So some of our holdbacks are moving from FB10s up to FB20s. Some of our FB20s have moved from FB20s to FB40s. None of our FB40s have moved to FB70s. There's a few I probably could do, but we're kind of short in FB70 space. We're gonna have to add some more of that in the near future so we can continue to do that. But I wanted to share with you the snakes that we are moving wanting you to see a lot of cool snakes, a lot of cool genetics, see what we're planning for the future. And people are always asking me, well, what, how big should my snake be before I move it to this size tub? And I always say, hell, I don't know. I just kind of eyeball it. And I do kind of eyeball it. I pretty much just eyeball it. That's one of those things that comes with experience. So, you know, you've been doing it a while, you go, oh man, you're ready. And you move it up. Uh, so I thought, well, to give you guys a reference of what I see when I want to move something, I would grab a tub and a scale. We're going to weigh these snakes for you today so you can see exactly what size snake I am moving. We're going to start with FB40s. So these are snakes that are an FB20 prior. An FB20 is a little bit wider than an FB40, but it's not as deep. The FB40 is a little bit thinner, but much deeper, much bigger tub overall. These are the same length as an FB70. They're just not as wide as an FB70. FB20 is about as wide as an FB70, but it's like stubby. So there you go. So we'll start with the snake here. This is an in-house produced snake. Most of them will be, but not all. Uh, she's from 2019. So she just got moved up literally today. I guess I should turn this on, let that uh, zero in. What you're looking at here, this is Kurt's favorite. Not really. This is a snake Kurt gets mad at me over. Ah, uh, he really doesn't. I give him more crap than he deserves. But this is a pastel lesser champagne. It's a champagne part that makes Kurt go, really, do we need more champagne? All right, girl, let's put you in here. I know you don't want your face touched, but you got to fit. You were being so sweet until we got to doing this. There you go. And as you can see, she's weighing in at right about 1,200 grams. I think her final is 1,198. There it is. So almost 1,200 grams, and we're moving her out of an FB20. Now, at this size too, it's more than just size, okay? If this snake was a problem feeder, I've got some snakes that are about this size. Uh, two pides, in fact, that I'm leaving in an FB20 for now. I have space. I can move them. I'm not doing it because they're sometimes shy feeders. And currently, they're feeding really, really well. So while they're on a good feeding streak, I want to leave them in that FB20 for a little longer because they're doing phenomenal in it. Um, if I move them to an FB40, my fear is with their personalities that those two snakes happen to have, they might revert back to not being very good feeders. We have to provide hides and do some other things to try to, to get them to do that. Why don't we just leave them where they're more comfortable for now and wait a little longer to move them? This girl here, though, is not shy at all. She is ready to feed. Oh, I know. You're like, why am I getting messed with today so much? You're probably saying, well, why is she so amped up and so intense? we got to remember, she's had a big day. She got a new tub today, and I'm taking her out again. So they kind of had an eventful day. Uh, but as you can see, she's just a little nervous, but we're not striking her bite. She's actually a pretty sweet snake. That was 190406. If you're wondering what these are for, just so I remember which ones to show you. Next up, we're going to go over here. Don't look at my bum. Uh, we're going to show you this, which is 170402. This was a very slow growing snake. She is one of her other pastel dinker snakes or pastel like dinker snakes. Her sister, which grew faster, had her first set of eggs this year. Uh, I'm hoping that she'll be ready to breed next year. And as you can see, she's set at 1158. So you're seeing a pretty consistent sign, right? Right around that 1200 mark. Now she has been a feist eater at times, but she's currently been doing really, really well. Uh, she was a struggle. Part of that struggle was new facility. She's been moved around a lot. That's kind of stunned that a tad. However, I think that with the way she's been eating, if she takes to her new cage well, we're going to be breeding her hopefully this coming season. For those of you that don't know, I don't breed at 1200. Well, her I would breed a little light because of her age. But this snake here, I showed you at first, she's only going to be three. It's going into her third year at 21. Uh, well, I guess it's only her second year, but she'll be three before she'd have eggs. I wouldn't breed this snake unless she hits about 1500 grams. 
This one I'd probably breed around 1300 because she's a little bit older. Sometimes that'll help spur them along. All right, ready to go back in there? I know, nice place. Oop, there you go. Ah, so here, this is another holdback of ours. This one is 190308, which means nothing to most of you. What that really means is born in 2019, third clutch, eighth baby, and you're looking at a killer bee. And again, 1,123 grams. So you're seeing we're right at that 11, 1,200 mark when we're moving these up. It seems to be kind of hit or miss right around there. Um, with her, she is not just a killer bee, though. She is a killer bee, 100% het for SK Exantic. That's why I kept her back. I really liked her color and everything else. But she will be able to produce Exantic babies for me. You can see she's all, all hides right now. You ever want to look inside of the ball python when they're in a ball? There it is. And now you can tell, too, she doesn't have really any wobble issues. Again, spider, you all know my feelings on that. We're not going to rehash that or beat that dead horse right now. I'm sure the day will come I will. Next is 180905. So this one is also hopeful to be bred this coming year. And she's at the exact age where you'd want to start doing that. And you can see she's at 1,379. So a little bigger than the last ones. Uh, again, eyeball, I'm going to be within a certain range, usually area. What you're looking at here is an albino. This one is possible het exantic. So she's a visual albino, possible het snow uh, with a paradox. And a good amount of paradoxing on her too. So I'll get her out so you can kind of see her. And she was selected as a keeper. I was really looking for snows, which I do have now. Uh, because of the paradox spots that you can see so all down there that's not dirt that is a nice really cool paradoxing so anyway really awesome i'll put her back let's go baby girl and she is likely going to be big enough to be bred one more from these this is another in-house production this one is a Champagne Inchy. So this is a snake that made Kurt kind of like Champagne. And it's, I can't even read this label, it's kind of peeling. I want to say it's from 18 if memory serves. And she's probably sitting right around that 1200 mark as well, 1218. So again, we're right in that 1150 to 1300 area where we're moving these guys up to FB40s. Um, and as you can see, I told you, I mean, I, I choose these by visual. So before I made this video, I moved them earlier today. I didn't weigh any of them. I marked the ones I wanted to move. Cleaned up, went to mark them. I did weigh them as I went to see how close I was. Uh, and we're within that 100, 150 gram range all across the board. What that tells me is doing it by, when they just look right, there's a set weight that I'm actually kind of looking for. I just know how to spot it with some other factors. Like I say, how they're feeding, how they're acting, all those things do play a role. For those of you not familiar with Champagne and Inchi, Inchi helps bring more pattern into Champagne. So as you have a, a snake that deletes a lot of pattern, the champagne brings all that back in. We are oh, sorry, yes, this inchy brings all that back in to the champagne. We once paired a blitz with a champagne, wanting to see what that would do. It also brought more pattern into champagne, however, not to the same level that inchy did. So I kind of like the inchy with champagne for pattern more than anything else. Ready to go back, baby girl? We do have some smaller ones to show you as well. This is probably my favorite one right here. So these have moved from an FB10 tub, which is the same length as an FB20, but skinnier, so a fairly small tub. We use them for our holdback hatchlings on up to right about this size here, which, as you can see, 384 grams. All right, guys, that cut that we never make was brought to you courtesy of the coronavirus. That's right. So if you all don't know, if you follow us closely, Kurt did actually have a bout of COVID. And before somebody starts screaming about you should be vaccinated, he was. Scott, that shit anyway. We're actually both vaccinated. Doesn't mean you can't catch something. But he's fine. He didn't die. He's healthy. He's off quarantine. He's back at work and all that. But it still left a little bit of a lingering, raspy cough. So we had a little coughing fit <laughs> <laughs> Take a 10 second break. But back to this snake. This is, of course, an Exantic Pastel Spider, so a Zebra Bee. She's a little bit smaller than most of the ones I would move over. 
However, she never misses a meal. She feeds like a beast. She's an aggressive feeder, man. She comes right out to get it. So with that, you know, I'm not as worried about moving her because I think she'll move really, really well. Man, I want to let you guys kind of just appreciate and see that. That pattern on her is just almost, I mean, as close to perfect as I can get it. There's one little dot there, very much striped. I, I, I really, really like this snake. Very, very beautiful snake. That's what we're looking for. Uh, that's literally a dream animal of mine. And I also, eh, you shouldn't reach spider money, money, money. No, it's because this is a dream animal of mine. I made it because it's a dream animal of mine. Let me say that again for the next person who says I'm a greedy bastard. I made it because it's a dream animal of mine. Uh, so anyway, there it is. Love this girl. And that's why we went ahead and moved her up. Because she is such a good feeder. That I think you'll do fine. I do. Continuing that same theme, I want to bring you this girl here, 190907. Now this is another Exanthic. This one's a super pastel. So there you go. And I'll, whoa, oh, I know, I know, I know. And she's weighing in at, what was it, almost 500 grams. So a little bit bigger, like I said, not a whole ton. Also a pretty good feeder. And she would just press on the size of the tub a little bit. She was, you could tell, getting ready to move out of that space. Uh, so where you see the super pastel, because usually when you see these are hatchlings, right? And they're like going to be white and black. Like you're not going to have as much silver. It is. Look at all the blushing you're getting through here. That is a telltale sign. And the head is still very blushed. So there you are. That is what you got going on there. Super pastel SK Xanthic. And this one is a little female. Okay, girl, I'm going to put you back. But don't worry not everything that I'm holding and moving is a visual exantic, okay? Some things are not going to be visual exantic that graduate up. This is one of the Jason Ross collection that I decided to keep for myself. That's right, we put a lot of those on our Patreon. Speaking of which, if you're not on Patreon, check it out. A lot of specials and stuff on there. And also, if you're still with us, please click that like and subscribe button. I forgot to tell you early on, but just... Click the like button, click the subscribe button. It really helps us out a ton. We'd really appreciate it. But this came to us listed as a Superfly Het Exanthic SK line. We'll put that down there. And as you can see, it's about 350 grams. Again, extremely aggressive feeder, flies out the tub, has tried to bite me on feed days multiple times. You can tell it's a sweet snake most time. I mean, on feed days, this thing's a demon, so I'm not worried about moving her up in size. But we really look at that 350 to about 450 size we tend to do this really pretty snake so all three are exanthic this one just isn't visual i want you to think for a minute the color on this how it's going to look as a visual exanthic think about some of the things we're making some of the plans we have and we think about this put back to his father which actually owned his father and his mother as well uh, which is really kind of cool <laughs> so when we put that back there you're going to have some really really pretty snakes I am super excited about what this can do. I also have a straight super pastel male, Exanthic, that I may use on this just to uh, diversify the bloodline a little bit further. And that would also give me, you know, well, if it is a super fly, which this would be the only super fly I own, it should give me super pastel across the board and super fly in approximately half the clutch with half that clutch also being visual. So uh, it'd be really awesome. Really awesome clutch. So, Kurt. Before we get off of here, and I do think it probably is super fly, do you have anything that you want to add or any questions? No. Nothing at all. Uh, so now that we can go off topic for a minute, why don't you tell the world, you got to talk loud because the mic's on my side, how that COVID was. It was just like a kind of a, just a bad cold and I didn't lose my taste or smell or anything. So if you guys couldn't hear him, bad cold, didn't lose his taste or smell. I know I talked to you several times while you had it, and there were a few days, man, you sounded like you felt like total shit, like maybe microwave shit at best, but pretty pretty crappy, but you didn't sound like you were going to die or anything. Did you ever think about going to the hospital? No. Okay, so it would be fair to say that your case was a fairly mild case, which is the majority of what I understand. You didn't, no long-term lasting effects. Now, were you the only person in your family to go through COVID? No. Um, we have a five-month-old baby. And it got a little bit of a temperature, mm -hmm. but didn't cough, didn't do anything. Uh, my wife had it and our daughter. 
So your our daughter's eleven. Eleven. I'll so say you got your preteen daughter had it, your wife had it, and probably your five month old. Yeah. And uh, and I, we I have would a nine year old uh, son that didn't get it. That's because boys play in the dirt and like eat nasty crap and don't care. So that's why you know they have these immune systems that are made to like you know beat the world. So he survived. The rest of you all got COVID, and nobody had the zombie apocalypse. Uh, and that's not me making light of things, but as we all get scared, a lot of people are scared to move throughout the world. Man, I get it, but the vast majority of people are going to be just like Kurt, vaccinated or not. They get it. They're going to be fine. Um, my in-laws have had it. Uh, you've had it. I've been forced up to dodge that crap. I don't know how, but you know. But for those, it is severe for some. So if you do, you know, take precautions you need to take, but live your life, folks. Live your life. I know I'm going to continue to do that, and I'm pretty sure, Kurt, you can, like, reckless abandon now, right? I mean, Jesus Christ, you're vaccinated, and you had COVID. You have, like, everything that could prevent you from getting COVID again. Is there anything that you're afraid of now? Uh, not COVID. Not COVID. The proper is bears. You should still be afraid of grizzly bears, but short of that, you should be good to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're going to get off of here. We'll catch you next time.